Today we're here to discuss a very important topic, mind control. Uh, I'm sure all of you guys have seen and heard about it in various movies, online clips, uh, great spy novels, things like that. And it exists on many various different levels. You have people who are programmed to be spies and assassins. You have people that are um, subject to subversion through music and media. So it really has permeated into every last facet, nook and cranny of our social culture. And we're all subject to it, whether or not we would like to uh, admit it. Coming to talks like this and becoming aware of various tactics that the powers that be utilize in order to shape and steer public consciousness is probably the first and foremost important tool in being able to combat it. So today we have an individual here who has actually suffered through uh, some ridiculous trauma. Her story is absolutely compelling. Uh, she's a survivor of MKUltra and Project Monarch. Her rescuer is also here, and in addition to that, we have an individual who was kind enough to lend herself to the event to add some additional perspective. So we have Kathy O'Brien, who is the MKUltra survivor. We have Mark Phillips, who is her rescuer, and we have television legend Roseanne Barr, who will also be talking about uh, dissociative identity disorder, uh, how she's been dealing with it and recovering from it, what she's been subject to, and she'll probably mention, you know, how Hollywood utilizes various tactics and techniques. It's going to be a very interesting talk. A lot of paradigms will be challenged, a lot of things that you might hear might sort of question your belief system, but, you know, that's sort of the catalyst and the fire that we're hoping to put under you guys so that when you go home, you can spend some additional time looking into these subjects and looking into this information and verify it on your own. Don't believe what I'm saying. Don't believe what they're saying. Do the fact checking and the, and the research for yourself and come to your own conclusions. Without any further ado, please give an absolutely heartwarming welcome for Roseanne Barr. so very much. The first thing that big time conspirators do when their privacy is invaded is to point their sticky fingers in the direction of the light and squeal, conspiracy nut, as if there are not cabals that pull the world's strings and push their pawns and shills out into the limelight to face the public they manipulate. Let's take a look at how naive and cuckoo it would be to think such a thing. All kinds of international organizations are composed of people united by common interests. Everything from world music to softball to bird watching to worshiping at the altar of Justin Bieber prompts people to hook up and form organizations, all of whom have their own hierarchies, communication networks, conventions, etc. And yet we're expected to believe uh, that the elites who wield the most power geopolitically via world banking, commerce, and weaponry, and the associated tentacles are only casually aware of each other's identity and agendas. You'd have to be a conspiracy nut to not buy that idea, wouldn't you? It's real COINTELPRO spin on the concept of naivete. And it's why we keep shining a light on the dirty tricks they pull in the dark and the ones they hide right on the front pages of their mainstream media outlets. The ridiculous is made to look like it's sublime reality, such as this one, which is a real hoot. The poor are bailing out the rich and the banks. <laughs> uh, you can't make this shit up, folks. Proof of mind control and the application of drugs is uh, the fact that without it, the American people would be demanding their money back. Let's not kid ourselves about where most Americans get their information 
Fox News may be the obvious standard bearer for the Tea Party types and other useful idiots who show how free they are by bad-mouthing President Obama 24-7 and calling anyone left of Karl Rove a libtard. But they serve the status quo by being the right-wing end of the bad cop, good cop charade that allows Jon Stewart, Bill Maher, and other hipster pundits to point to them as the problem. Those atop what sadly passes for the left for too long now continue to enrich themselves just like the right, through lying, misdirection, and pretense while looking like the good guys. Meanwhile, speaking of, uh, of grand conspiracies, we know that instead of indicting the two-headed Demopublican monster that inhabits Washington, D.C., the Ariana Huffingtons will keep shoveling in the money for droning on and on about how much better things would be if it weren't for gargoyles like Mitch McConnell and Ted Cruz. They may as well be talking about how great things would be if the Joker would ease up on Batman. Speaking of naivete, here's another way that the concept gets a little distorted in the hall of mirrors in which we find ourselves when we lift the veil war woven by corporatist media and good old-fashioned dominant culture values. Speaking of mind control, people who think that spells, incantations, mantras, and such are relics from the past or, uh, or devices used only by primitive cultures to manipulate their superstitious masses are not as sophisticated as they might think. Those are not things from a bygone age. They are ingrained in the fabric of our present day world culture and are mainstays of political persuasion and the churning world of commerce, which is a nicer way of saying the unquestioning nationalist consumerist mindset that drives the lemming-like parade and charade that comp comprises most of our lives. We may stop being required to recite the Pledge of Allegiance when we leave high school, but we never really escape the onslaught of bumper stickerish rhetoric that's designed to keep us in line. We may as well call it a spell. I'm talking about the widely held belief, you know, I mean, in the U.S., that the U.S. is the world's foremost bastion of freedom, decency, and honor. And any who don't swallow that idea, much less stand against it, are terrorists. Whistleblowers are seen as traitors who aid and abet the enemy who, as George W. Bush conveniently explained, is anyone who is not for his policies. President Obama, who promised to close Guantanamo, continues that tradition. Divide and conquer, it's not a mantra that the elites, the Illuminati, or the 1% or any of that choose to utter publicly, but it's one that is a pillar of their strategy to retain and consolidate power. They know that the more we feel threatened and marginalized, the more we faction against each other, and the more we faction against each other, the more threatened and marginalized we are. It's a vicious cycle for most of the world's people, but a winning strategy for the world's owners. Are there owners? Yes. When, when the six members of the Walton family who own Walmart have as much wealth as the bottom 50% of Americans, well, we won't even go into the Koch brothers right now. Let's just say they're happy that they've managed to herd Americans into two camps lab labeled conservative, and liberal or progressive, and that they can use the resulting gridlock to paralyze the public while they continue to bust unions, attack women's reproductive rights, and also the uh, fight for equal pay. George Washington said he feared the day might come when a couple of powerful political parties might own the United States government. Well, it didn't take long, did it? My own candidacy proved how much the Coke versus Pepsi system 
fears any difference, any kind of an alternative. But we won't roll over because surrender is not an option. The greedy, paranoid control freaks who are pulling their wagons in a circle and trying to tighten the noose around what is left of our freedoms must be fought on every level. And, and that is what we will do. I ask you, what else is worth doing? Kathy and I and Mark are friends, and though we seldom see each other, we do talk on the phone all the time, frequently, and we always talk about what we can do to help people who are dissociative. Um, because people who are dissociative have already been under some form of mind control, even if it's internal, and um, <clears throat> are at great risk right now. Dissociation is a created state of terror. Forgetting and remembering in fragments of time, hiding things from yourself, and then finding them in forgotten places years later, wearing different eyeglass prescriptions you know, during the day, being allergic to things, and then not being allergic to those same things within weeks are all part of it. But the most useful part of all mind control and dissociation is that it makes tolerance of the intolerable appear normal. That is what was needed for power to control the citizens of any given nation. When the intolerable and the unspeakable are spoken and recognized and named, identified, they can be properly opposed. When woven into visibility, they no longer lurk in the shadows of the secret dark places, and only then things can become ripe for change. This is that time because, you know, of the internet and, the, and uh, you know, for as long as we'll have it, for as long as uh, we'll be allowed to have it. To those who are divided by violence, trauma, shock, or awe, for my sake and yours, anybody who is divided at all or has PTSD or any, any kind of stuff like that, internal conflict, Thank God we have, and I, I say God, thank God we have marijuana. And you know, a lot of people say, you know, holy ganja, and I'm one of those people because I know that this is a holy thing that can remove my control. You know, the legal drugs are the ones that keep it in place. So right there, I, I don't think really, you need to know more than that about how mind control works. I don't think so. That's it in a nutshell. Keeping people unaware of what they're doing um, helps you respond to panic programming. The mentally divided are being activated at this time because a fugue state and, in, and a fugue state enacted. Horrors inflicted with no awareness whatsoever of being present while you do. Writing down what you feel is, is the key, an easy key, to unlock the prison doors of mind control. Especially like if you smoke a joint and then write. Um, people who are in show business generally are people who, you know, uh, have, have a great need to be loved and accepted and perform and to get love and, you know, positive feedback back from it. That, that's what drives most artists and stuff. So uh, they're very, very sensitive people. The more creative you are, the more sensitive you are, the more you really, really need to uh, be able to employ some sort of self-protection so that uh, not just always accepting things, because that, that is part of being uh, a survivor of mind control, too, is that you, using all of that new age stuff, which is the same crap as the old age stuff, um, you know, people, it drives me crazy sometimes as people are like, oh, I'm so forgiving and loving. I'm so wonderfully pacifist, 
loving and forgiving and everything is wonderful and we're all, well, you know, it's just bullshit. It's bullshit. And it's harmful, horrible, negative, murderous bullshit at that. Because it keeps people from getting up off of their butts and, you know, joining in the fight. And uh, all that positive thinking stuff uh, is, is what victims do. And so if you are a victim of any kind of stuff like that, the best thing you could do for yourself today is to stop talking about forgiveness. Please do that, just for me, for just today. Maybe this time we're, that we're together. Please stop talking about forgiveness until um, genocide in Canada ends or something like that, you know, of, of the native tribes of Canada. Um, I don't know more. Please don't talk about how wonderful and positive things are turning out because they're not. And, uh, you know, talk about what's real and, and what's really happening in the most, uh, in the darkest, most secret of places. Bring, when you talk about it, you're exposing it to light, and, and it mutates. In my life, I, I did heal from uh, multiple personality disorder. I, I'm about as integrated as somebody like me is ever going to get. And that's because I actually am aware of what I'm doing. Almost every minute of the day, I'm aware of what I'm doing. And also, I don't say anything that I don't mean. <laughs> and also, if I don't believe it's true, I, I'm not going to do it. Because I won't divide against myself like that anymore. I lived a lifetime like that. Uh, saying one thing and doing another. And that's called a fugue state, just in case you want to know. And it's really hard to try to uh, come to a place where you actually live your beliefs. It's so hard, isn't it? Because you're like, what part of this is real and what part? I mean, you know, I see a lot of people nodding. I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to think that you know what I'm talking about. And I, I was thinking about all the things I could say here t today, and I, I was very excited to be with Kathy and Mark and, and people like us. All here. And I, I was just thinking that one thing I could do is just to show you what, what I've done and how I, well, plus a lot of other things, a, a lot of really excellent therapy from a person who's from here, Dr. Colin Ross. And uh, he, he's been my doctor for a long, long time, my psychiatrist that helped me. But here's what I do. And here's what you should do too. When you approach a panic state, and um, the reason I'm telling you that is because in order to be free of mind control, here's, here's what that means. That words, magic words, or touch words, or code words, they don't work on you anymore. And neither do symbols. They don't anymore uh, enact a certain reaction. And uh, it's, all, it's so funny and so simple because you know what, it's all about breathing. By God, it's all about breathing. Staying rational, staying safe, staying centered, staying calm, and staying in the, in the right mental state, which we all really, really need because we're we are being assaulted with thoughts and images that are foreign to uh, what we believe. So here's what you do. I, I, I divided, devised this breathing for people and I divide it into three parts and it is based on the number three and it is based on the number ten for anybody who wants to, and all of you should, read about the number three and read about the number ten. Numbers are, are, are some incredible magic and symbols. And they're also real. <laughs> they're not things that you're going to believe against all logic, fact, science, and truth. That's the difference. They're real numbers.
And they're very mystical and very deep. So here's, here's what I do. And I want you to do it too, because we have to get our breathing to where it doesn't speed up, and then we lose control. So in three parts of 10 seconds each, it'd be cool if we could all do it together too. Like um, we inhale for, 10, for a count of 10, hold it, contain it in our lungs, as we mentally disperse it through our bodies, and then exhale it for 10, two. What we're doing is taking in, receiving, containing, dispersing, oxygen, which is what our cells most require, and which is so great because it just happens to be free. <laughs> So we're gonna take that in, we're gonna contain it in our lungs while we're mentally sending oxygen through every cell of our body and then we will exhale it within the same 10 count and everything that doesn't serve our body, we exhale so that the plants and the living things of the earth who do use that in this exchange called life, uh, we'll, we'll receive it too, and then we've like transmuted something very, very deeply through our body and added something positive to the world. And the thing that makes it so positive is that it's the awareness of the fact that you're doing it. And that is no small thing. Awareness is no small thing. Do less. Write more and smoke a lot of pot. Because <laughs> our goal, our goal is not just self-synthesis, but synthesis with other people of like mind so that we can together stop factioning against each other and unite and, uh, you know, rise to the thing we were put here on earth to do, which is to make everything right and do it the right way. And I, I do believe that's coming. And I'm going to now introduce a person who knows way more than me about all this stuff and is a, a fantastic and brilliant human being who also went through quite a lot in his life. And um, you know, I'm thrilled to know you, Mark, and I'm thrilled to, to bring him up for you guys to hear him. Mark Phillips. First of all, I'd like to thank Patrick and Kadena for having us here and giving us an opportunity. We're here because, uh, because we, we felt the need to be, and because it's our second anniversary. Toronto was the very first place I spoke at. What you're gonna hear is, uh, is almost a, a a story that none of you would like to relate to. I'd like for none of you to believe it because it's so horrible. I'd like everyone in this room to look further and research everything that you hear because the stuff I'm gonna tell you has been declassified. I'm a former intelligence officer with the Central Intelligence Agency and some other agencies. There's about 14 of them now. There were about seven of them then. The stuff I'm going to tell you about is right in your face, just like Roseanne said. That's the best kept secret. And I practice that in my own home. When I have confidential stuff I don't particularly want anybody getting into, I place it all over the house, right where you can see it. But it's not in a place you'd be looking for it. That is an um, old trick that magicians use. The closer you get, the less you see. 
There's a movie out right now called Now You See Me. I would strongly urge each and every one of you to see it because one of the characters that plays uh, in that part is doing exactly what I was trained to do. Everything yeah, he does, I was trained to do. People with the Central Intelligence Agency, I'm talking about field people, officers, they're trained to become the best liars on earth. Their body language, the micro muscles around their eyes, the blood pressure building in their earlobes, hand movements, eye movements, everything is formulated. That was one of the reasons that I was able to get out alive because the powers to be said, nobody's gonna believe an old spook. Nobody, particularly when he's talking about something as horrific as trauma-based mind control. I became involved with the intelligence community, um, I suppose the way that most people do. The training I had began, I suppose, before age five. I came from a, a wealthy family, and uh, uh, my father was very abusive, and because we, he had money and, and uh, statute in the, in the community, in the state, well, in the country, nobody looked. I had one or two teachers that did. But now I'm gonna tell you something. I couldn't talk until I was about 19. And what better person to hire as an intelligence officer than somebody they can't talk. I lived inside my head. I learned how to read people. And I was being prepared my whole life and never knew it. My father had no concept that I would be drafted. One of them pulled me to the side. He said, this is an old Hollywood trick, but don't call us, we'll call you. And he handed me a business card. And it said, Defense, Defense Intelligence Agency. For three months, the least was once, the most was five times a week I was tested. Actually by really just two different um, psychologists and psychiatrists. The questions that they posed to me, it didn't take me long to figure out that they were just rewording the same questions. I thought, well, that's odd. If they think they're fooling me on this, why would I be joining the intelligence community? The United States government learned a lot after World War II about how minds actually work. And they began to understand how to select people for certain jobs because they knew how my mind worked. And because I lived in my head, I was a perfect candidate. The area that I would be doing was mind sciences. My dream come true. The people I worked with, yes, many of them had a real problem speaking English. They came over under Project Paperclip. Project Paperclip was a very bad thing because the Defense Department promised Congress they wouldn't bring in any Nazis. Well, the fact of the matter is, unless you became a Nazi, or worse, SS, you could not keep your job as a scientist, and you're gonna die working for Hitler. So you had a choice, either get to do what you like to do, which was build rockets, or work in mine sciences, so that you didn't have to have institutions or prisons anymore. Everybody could be happy and, and could be uh, productive. And they wouldn't be under some sort of mind control, except their own. I knew that we were, the intelligence community and science 
uh, military science, was 25 years ahead of everything. Can you imagine if you removed everything in your lives right now that, that has been created in the last 25 years, what you would have left? The information needs to be out. And now we're into the second and maybe even the third generation of people that we're talking. When Kathy and I started in 1991, speaking to psychiatrists, psychologists, judges, lawyers, they said you can't use the words mind control. There's no such thing. The reason I'm here is because of mind control. The reason I'm here is because I was invited to become the president of a very large corporation working with the People's Republic of China, building giant capacitor systems so that they could maintain their output in their minds. And since everything in it made out of metal in China is run by the military, they had checked me out. So when I was approached by this fellow by the name of Alex Houston in Nashville, Tennessee, an MC, a, a supposed comedian, he's not a comedian, that's a comedian. I could tell that he was a habitual liar. I mean, I knew that within one second. I'm also a graphologist, and I saw his handwriting. Oh, jeez. You know, I, you wouldn't sleep in the same room with this guy under any circumstances. <laughs> Plus, I found out about his, his sexual preferences after I rescued Kathy, and I know I, I did sleep in the same room with him one time. And I've been re-examining that time ever since. <laughs> But a, a Chinese intelligence officer approached me on the night of the ribbon cutting ceremony and he said, I'd like, to, I'd like to show you something. And I thought, oh hell, you know, there were, there were probably eight or nine hundred people there. All the big ways, any excuse to get together and have a big gala. And this place was beautiful as they had us in. And um, Alex wasn't with me. And so they, and I thought it strange that they didn't want him to come over because he was my partner in the United States. Nope, they didn't want him. So they, this guy began to open his briefcase and he perfect English. He begins to show me my personal background records, beginning with my, those 1952 records and some of the notes made by some of the psychologists that had reviewed them. And even the, my neighbors and my father's and mother's friends that the DIA had investigated me through. These people, every one of them, were told I was gonna be associated with some sensitive military information and they just wanted to know what their opinion was of me as a child, well, and nobody knew. And that must have been what they wanted to find out. He went on to show me some pictures of Alex Houston having sex with a small boy in Haiti, and he went and showed me other pictures, equally as graphic, of him with little children. It was enough to make you puke. Chinese intelligence officer was telling me the truth when he said, Mr. Houston is involved in child and adult pornography. He's involved in child and adult prostitution, money laundering for the CIA, and he's into drug distribution with some drug lords of Central, South America, Mexico, and Cuba. You gotta remember, in, in the 1960s, we had devised methods using technologies. They weren't any good. They all changed and evolved with with technology, the way technologies do. But to have external control of a mind from the level of being able to control emotion, logic, two sides of the brain, unnoticeably, they didn't use trauma-based. Trauma-based mind control has been around longer than the pharaohs. It goes back thousands of years. It takes a complete psychopath to use trauma to control another person's mind. 
to persuade somebody to do something that might benefit them and certainly benefit you, might do it. And I couldn't walk away from what I knew. So I went to a place of mind control programming, a military base just outside of Nashville. And it was one that I just, I mean, I had worked there. I'd seen stuff done, not bad stuff. You know, I never saw anybody being tortured, ever, ever. I never saw high voltage being used, not one time. Drugs, hypnosis, yes, tons of it. I was told that this woman and a child was being maintained under trauma-based mind control for, the, for prostitution and, and child pornography, and it went all the way to the White House. I said, I don't like George Wood, but I don't dislike him that much. They said, um, whatever you've heard, you can believe it. I said, well, if I believe it, I'm going to do something about it. They said, you, you, you are committing suicide. I had $2.2 million that I earned hard work and save, paid taxes on, that was taken from me the day after I, I rescued her and her daughter. I had an airplane, I had a car, I had every kind of toy you can imagine. And believe me, that's all I had left. And I had some money buried out in the backyard just for running to the islands and gambling or something. So I dug up the backyard, sold everything that I had, and I convinced everybody. Now these are the people that trained me. I convinced them that I was stark, raving mad. I could not do what they needed, what she needed done. And when I contacted everybody, they ran, all except for some federal investigators. And one of them happened to be the man who was in charge of the Far East, U.S. Customs Enforcement. He worked directly under the man that George Herbert Walker Bush put in to head up customs. A fellow by the name of Von Rapp. William Von Rapp. This guy, when he found out what Kathy had told and had, we, I had investigated and it was all true, I, I did manage to get into Houston safe and he kept some things in there he shouldn't have. Like CIA numbered bank accounts with millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars in them. When I turned that over to them, they came back and told me, they said, this is not going anywhere, you're gonna die. Mark, run, don't get close to anybody, you're gonna kill them. And I don't know whether I mentioned this or not, but after I rescued Kathy, I didn't speak to my son again, and he and I were very close. He was a teenager. And I told him someday, maybe if I live, you'll find out what I'm doing is something I believe in doing. And if you do everything you believe in doing, you will succeed. Don't measure the success in money because I'm just about as poor as I was the minute I rescued her. But I'm a really rich man with what I have here and how I feel about myself. I don't give a rat's rear what any of you think of me. You can call me a traitor. You can call me anything you want to. I don't care. What matters is I've told you the truth and you're going to hear the rest of the story because when I found out that those, that woman and that little girl were being maintained under trauma-based mind control, I was absolutely on fire. When we had the technology at that time, she could have been controlled a whole lot better and a whole lot safer. External control of the mind today has advanced so far that if I were to tell you what I know, I don't have it validated, so I can't tell you. There's plenty of stuff out there in your face. Look it up. Look up the, from the U.S. patents end of it. I told Kathy 
I said, honey, you're not going to know where you're going until you know where you've been. I'm going to ask you two questions. And I realized the condition of your mind. Her eyes, there were no color. I had no idea what color her eyes were. I said, how old are you? She's 24. I said, what's your full name? And she put her head down. She said, Kathy, just call me Kathy. Everybody calls me. Well, they call me the other name, but Kathy. I said, may I show you your driver's license? She said, well, yeah, I'll go get it. I said, no. I said, you know simple math? I said, you're not 24. You have been 24 in six years. I said, that is not your real name. That's part of it. And I pulled out something else. I said, that's your real name. She said, well, I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I didn't know anybody. Even. I said, look, you're going to know everything. The only thing, and the other thing that I ask you to do is, if I ask you to please don't do so, don't do it. I will not ever ask you to do something without explaining why I need you to do it. And believe me, you'll never know all of the reasons why. There's one thing a spook does. He never, ever, ever can physically get out of his mouth all the reasons that he wants you to do something. He can only give you part of it because something just kind of breaks down. That's our own personal program. So the, everything is done for at least three reasons. Three. Three is an absolute magic number. And there are many, many avenues going, looking towards numerology and figuring it all out. Listen, if those guys at the Pentagon play around with numerology, there's got to be something to it. And I never heard anyone mention it except Roseanne. The best revenge you can have is to heal. I said, and the best revenge I can get for those bastards taking everything, including my son, away from me, is to expose them. I doubt that it'll hurt any of them, but it's sure gonna be embarrassing as hell when they start opening presents from under the tree. She said, why? I said, you'll see. At one point, we got a copy of trans in every single politician in Congress, both houses, and their wives, and their children, and some of their nieces and nephews. When the judge invoked the National Security Act on our case and said we can't adjudicate this any further because laws do not apply in cases of national security, and Yesterday, the FBI said there was no such thing as mind control, and today, you said, that same FBI guys, I'm the most dangerous man in the state of Tennessee. Well, I'll tell you what that means. He said, because he, he's a mind control expert. The judge said, okay, I'm gonna hold you in contempt and lock your butts up. He said, yesterday you, you told me there was no such thing. Now you're telling me this guy is the best. I want you to leave my court, and if you come back, or send any representative from the Federal Bureau of Investigation in here, I'm going to hold them in contempt and lock you up. So, Kathy cried, and I did too. I said, honey, that saved our lives right there. They can't touch us. We are now in a Mexican standoff. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's not the Stockholm Syndrome, that's when you fall in love with your captor or whatever, or you, you fall in love with somebody who's getting you in a hell of a lot of trouble. <laughs> it's not the Bonnie and Clyde Syndrome. There is no such thing. Um, love grows, and what I was given was the best of all. I'd like for her to tell you what happened to her and who did it. And I would like for each one of you to look further and know that some of the things that I've told you tonight are just tips of the iceberg, but I'm hoping I hit enough of them. And I'm hoping that some of you all in there will take this information and share it with somebody else that you love.
Mark is an inspiration to all of us to make a difference where we can. Once your eyes are open and you have knowledge, you see what's really happening in our world, just gather your strength of spirit and with integrity and compassion. Begin to make a difference in light of that truth. I'm certainly fortunate, we're all fortunate, that Mark found his voice and was able to speak out and bring so much truth to light. What he learned in mind sciences is exactly what freed my mind. And the criminals that are in control of the U.S. government, that are in control of our world today, never believed that someone like Mark Phillips would take the information on mind control and use it to free a mind instead of restore one. They never counted on someone like Mark Phillips to be able to stand up and speak. Someone who had been trained into secrecy, someone who couldn't speak from such an early age, to find his voice and start speaking out globally and raising awareness for 25 years now. Awareness is the first step towards positive, necessary change. We've met a lot of people while we've been traveling, and Roseanne is just one wonderful, delightful friend we've found along the way. We met in 2009 when we were speaking in Hollywood, right in the pit of, of Hollywood there. <laughs> reaching out to help those that had been affected by mind control, and also to raise awareness on solutions on how to heal from mind control, how to expand thinking beyond the controlled medias. And Roseanne was right there, making a positive difference from the very onset of her hit TV show, where she was sprinkling in information. When your eyes are open to truth, when your eyes are open to what mind control is, and you look back through her shows through the years, you'll find the more you know, the more you see that she's been telling you powerful truths all along. Even through the controlled media, she was sneaking it in there through humor, and she's done a phenomenal job. 25 years later, this is Roseanne's 25th anniversary of having been on television and, and getting this information out there. Um, we get to share this, this opportunity here to bring truth to light and raise awareness together once again. In 2009 when we did it, we did it with Dr. Colin Ross. Dr. Colin Ross um, is from this area. You, some of you may have heard him speak. Um, he's a leader in mental health, making a powerful difference in helping um, good people like Roseanne and so many others heal. And also to show how much the military is being controlled and how much militaries worldwide need the truth that makes them free. Once your eyes are open to truth, once you begin to see what's really happening in our world, you'll find that mind control is the common thread that's weaving through society's woes. Mind control is a sliding scale from information control in the medias to the kind of absolute robotic mind control that I experienced on a White House Pentagon level. Information control is a very powerful form of mind control because it's kept people in the dark for generations now. The media has become so violent, it just pits people against each other. It acts like, teaches us that differences are something to war over instead of learn from. The media has been giving us misinformation and we all formulate our thoughts, our opinions, and our, ultimately our actions based on what we need on what we know. And what we need to know is that knowledge base has been altered. We need to reach out to alternative medias such as um, conspiracy culture. Thank you, Kadena and Patrick, for this wonderful event. To the alternative uh, radio and other media 
uh, members, to the documentary filmmakers, to the people who are making that difference. Now that we have the internet, we have a much better opportunity of having truth. The criminals in control of the United States and our world have been operating on the philosophy that secret knowledge equals power. That's why so much disinformation, misinformation, and hidden truths. Well, their knowledge base is eroding now, or their, their power base is eroding because knowledge is rising. With their secrets being told through events such as this, for the new whistleblowers of today, like um, Assange and Snowden, who are using the internet and getting mass amounts of misinformation out there. <laughs> Secrets are being told, and as the truth comes to light, that is our turn. That empowers all of us to open our eyes and gather our strength of spirit and make a difference in our own lives, in our own communities, in our own walks of life with what we know. Mark certainly was uh, brave enough to do it, and uh, there's so many others that, are, um, that have been affected adversely, and it doesn't take much. It only takes free thought, which allows for free will, which allows for a person to gain their strength of spirit and to begin living a purposeful and meaningful life. I'm extremely fortunate to have survived my mind control ordeal. Mine was horrific and horrendous, and it was based on what the Hitler Himmler research had learned about the effects of trauma on the human mind. It's what the Catholics had long since learned about effects of trauma on the human mind through the Spanish Inquisition, and the, the kind of tortures that they were using back with the Crusades in the early days. They knew the effects of trauma on the human mind. That information has been suppressed in the mental health systems even. Um, Dr. Ewan Cameron, who is founder of the American Psychiatric Association, um, who was working in Montreal at the Allen Memorial Institute, was an MK Ultra doctor, and he deliberately, deliberately suppressed information on the effects of trauma on the human mind. This is what we need to learn because our world is becoming a very violent and traumatic place. As those traumas rise, we become more suggestible. Since my experience was extreme, and my control is a sliding scale. By understanding what I went through and how I healed, I hope it empowers each and every one of you to begin reclaiming control over our own minds, our lives, and restoring peace to our planet. One thing that I've learned in traveling and speaking out globally is that people all over the world want the same things. They want peace, love, happiness, and truth, the kind of truth that makes them free. I didn't know my own truth until after Mark rescued me, because I'd been born into a multi-generational incest-based family in Muskegon, Michigan, not too far over the border there. My father had been sexually abused, my mother was sexually abused, and they were sexually abusing me. My father was earning his living as a worm digger and supplemented his um, meager income with child pornography. He was selling that child pornography of me through the U.S. mails when a criminal faction in control of our government, who were um, furthering what Project Paperclip, the information they brought in on, um, on mind control, he was furthering that and bringing it into the CIA and bringing it in onto a mass scale. This one particular politician that was involved in that was just a local politician at that time. 
And he approached my father and told him he could receive immunity from prosecution if he would agree to sell me into MK Ultra Mind Control. Because any child who had been sexually abused and used in child pornography so horrifically prior to age five would be suffering from the dissociative identity disorder that made me a target for mind control. This politician was Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford went on to become the unelected president of the United States. And Gerald Ford, um, as his political career escalated, so too did my victimization and mind control. My father thought it was a great idea to sell me into the project because he became extremely wealthy with lucrative military contracts. And um, he was immediately flown to Boston, Massachusetts. I was being raised Catholic. The Catholic child abuse scandal that has finally come to light emanating out of Boston, Massachusetts was nothing new while I was growing up. It was a very deliberate, established program which was emerging of Catholic and CIA and Nazi information on mind control to have a traumatized mind to be easily led into mind control. Cardinal Law was very much a part of those MKUltra mind control operations from back when I was so young. And my father was taught how to manipulate the mind of someone who was suffering from a dissociative disorder. And what that meant was that when I was sexually abused as a very young child, I didn't, I, I was too young to know that it was wrong. I didn't form any kind of a judgment on it in any way or anything like that. It wasn't a psychological choice. But my brain, the way our brains work when they endure trauma, as my brain sectioned off that traumatic event so the rest of my mind could function normally. And this little compartment in my brain would be triggered open when my father would come in to sexually abuse me again. And that part of me was operating on a subconscious level. When my father had been flown to Boston, the Catholic Church that I was being raised in was heavily involved in MK Ultra Mind Control and was part of this, this operation. Muskegon, Michigan is known as a pedophile capital because of the pervasiveness of the child abuse there. But I was subjected to a cult ritual within the Catholic Church. A cult ritual is very traumatic. And again, I was so young that the blood of an animal was no different than the blood of a person. It was something horrific. And it was so horrific that my conscious mind took flight from the horror of it all. And the memory of that event was compartmentalized in my brain on a subconscious level. As more and more traumas, deliberate, systematic traumas occurred in my life to prepare me for what would later be a White House Pentagon level of MK Ultra Mind Control. I had so many different sections compartmentalized in my brain with no continuity because if the neuron pathways of the brain actually physically shut down and keep that information suppressed. So that, that while the rest of the mind is functioning normally, if it's traumatized too, there are so many different compartments, there was no continuity between them, and I lost my concept of time. Because without any ability to know what happened here and what's happening here and connecting any aspect of life, time becomes extremely abstract. Without a concept of time, I didn't have any conscious awareness. And without conscious awareness, that left my subconscious mind wide open and easily led. The subconscious mind has no ability to reason. It has no ability to consciously comprehend. It doesn't think the way that the conscious mind does. With a conscious mind, we have choice. The subconscious is just manipulated. So when trauma occurs, the conscious mind is 
removed more and it leaves the subconscious mind extremely vulnerable and it's at times like that that then our medias will come in. In the United States, for example, when 911 happened, the whole country was traumatized and we were led into war. A war that's going on today and it just stays that way. So whenever trauma occurs, be aware of the fact that your brain is responding to that, whether you are rationalizing it or not, because your subconscious mind can't rationalize, but your subconscious is being easily manipulated and easily led. It's times like that that we lose more of our freedoms. And it's times like that that we're led into things like war, because it's not basic human nature to war. It's not basic human nature to be violent. It's not basic human nature to hate difference. Well, by the time I was sold into the project and I'd lost my conscious thought, I was taken to various military bases and government installations, NASA installations, for systematic, regimented mind control programming. On the military basis, I received some of the kind of programming that the military does that makes it where they can point and shoot a gun and shoot an enemy without any conscious rationalization of it, because none of us would want to do that. So the military is trained just to point and shoot, respond, do, just do. And the kind of programming that, 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 is subject, that they're subjected to is one they can heal from too because I am so fortunate to have healed from my systematic, absolute, robotic mind control. On those government installations, um, I was often tortured. And being tortured, my conscious mind would take flight. I think that probably many of us have heard people who've been through an extreme trauma say that it was as though they were looking down on their body. And it's another aspect of our brain and the way that it works. But it was as though my spirit took flight to a safe, loving space. My spirit was never touched. But because I didn't have any conscious thought and control over my own mind, I didn't have the capacity to express that spirit that had taken flight anymore. I didn't have that anymore. And without that, I didn't have soul expression. To me, the spirit is like the energy of being, while soul is that energy expressed. It's what we need to be able to stand up for what we believe in in life. It's what we need for being able to live life's purpose and the, dis discover all the beautiful aspects of life that are out there. My victimization went on into a more and more traumas and into a regimented form of mind control to where I could only robotically do exactly what I was told to do. And I was instructed on a Pentagon level and worked directly under Dick Cheney. I think every one of us can see clearly how horrific of a person he is. He not only traumatized me personally, he has traumatized the nation and the world with his violent, violent actions and warmongering, hateful, hurtful ways that have eroded so much of our planet at this point. I don't want to necessarily just point fingers at the likes of Dick Cheney because these, these folks that had abused me are dying off and things are changing and different people are coming into place. And as they do, we got to make sure that we don't allow more leaders in that are just like that, that have that same kind of soulless, hateful agenda. So to understand mind control will be the ultimate. Gerald Ford, when you look at who he had in his cabinet, he had George Bush Sr. as head of the CIA, Dick Cheney as his Secretary of State, Donald Rumsfeld as his Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld is Mr. Monsanto. I think many of us know how bad Monsanto 
is affecting all of us. Under MK Ultra Mind Control, I had to regimented sleep, food, and water deprivation, and what foods I was fed included Monsanto products. It included copious quantities of NutraSweet aspartame. That artificial sweetener renders a person um, more easily led. It, it dumbs people down on a mass scale. Anytime we let a pharmaceutical company manufacture our food, that's, that's absurd. What are we doing? And when we look at the likes of Donald Rumsfeld, who's been a major power player behind the scenes for so long, along with George Bush Sr. and Dick Cheney, um, it's absurd that we follow leaders that number one, we didn't elect, and number two, that are misleading us into ways that are very contrary to our being. We need to regain our strength of spirit. When I worked on a White House Pentagon level, I was in and out of the White House, I was exposed to various government leaders, um, some of which are Canadian, uh, I encourage you all, please look into Transformation of America for the names if you want to know who those are and the absolute details. Because Transformation of America is 100% total, absolute, validated fact. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be speaking here and national security wouldn't be on it. Um, but, but you can get the absolute details on mind control and who was involved in Transformation of America, which is now um, in law libraries worldwide and being taught at major universities so that people can see how our governments have been taken over and how we've all been manipulated into this, this um, violent frenzy that's affecting society today. I was forced to participate in criminal covert activities like the CIA's uh, cocaine industry and their so-called war on drugs was no more than them taking over the industry worldwide and funding their black budget to further their adverse agenda. I was prostituted to various government leaders, and my daughter was as well. And by doing that, they were actually uh, covertly filming that. So someone that knows anything about filming it would certainly know that they that has been used in a bad way. It's not that in, information is neither good nor bad, technology need, is neither good nor bad, it's who has it, for what purpose, and how they're using it. And that technology was being used to um, film and these political leaders in very compromising positions and then hold them uh, for blackmail later on. That's how so many of, our, of these criminals have been put in place. In one place where I was um, traumatized in a military maneuver called a most dangerous game, which is in an essence human hunting. Um, it was um, as George Bush Jr. was being subjected to the same regimented torture that I was. I'm certainly not the only one that was exposed to MK Ultra Mind Control on the, the different projects. There are different projects, and the one that I was used in was multi-generational. It was a genetic um, mind control project. And George Bush Jr. was used, um, it was trained and groomed and totally robotically mind controlled for um, to be in the office of president. The office of president in the United States is nothing more than a figurehead. The power is actually going on behind the scene. You notice he did have Dick Cheney as his vice president. And when Dick Cheney shot his attorney in the face, from, did the, that news reach up here? When he, when he, okay. When he shot his um, attorney in the face, Bush Jr. hadn't been told what to say yet, and the cameras went on him, and he said that if Dick Cheney would, would shoot his own attorney, imagine what he'd do to the likes of you. 
that was verbatim the program that I had endured in Most Dangerous Game and that I knew he endured as well. So sometimes the more we know, the more we see, and the more we hear, the more sense we're going to be able to make out of even what little tiny bit tidbits do filter in through the mainstream media. We'll at least understand how we're being manipulated and think twice and know what's going on. In 1988, Mark rescued my daughter and I from our horrible mind control victimization. I had reached the age of 30, as you pointed out, and they considered me all used up because since I was being prostituted, they figured that was too old already anyway. But also, around age 30, each one of us, another thing our brain does is it goes through these electrochemical changes where neuron pathways can start to open up in the brain and people oftentimes begin to remember repressed memory from childhood of childhood sexual abuse. Usually around age 30 it'll start to surface. So I was to be killed before anything could possibly begin leaking um, up and and, and uh, my memories begin to, you know, just the, the neuron pathways begin to jumble up a bit. Under my control, while my, um, my food, my sleep, and my water was all controlled, the number one drug, in spite of being exposed to so much through the CIA's drug industry, um, the one thing that they're adamantly opposed to is marijuana. And that was one drug that I was never to be subjected to. And it's one drug that was absolutely um, uh, forbidden in the military because it breaks up programming. The, uh, chemi the chemical actions of, um, of marijuana actually um, open up the neuron pathways in the brain. And that, that just totally wrecks the programming. It's kind of like, wow, people, people get that. Wow, the mind expansion kind of feeling with, with marijuana is because it's actually opening up neuron pathways in the brain. And they're finding all kinds of healing applications for it. But one very important one is that it disrupts mind control. It expands thinking beyond that kind of control. And it is definitely a solution for PTSD mind control soldiers that are in need of help and understanding. So that's a, a very important piece of information and another reason why we need to legalize marijuana is for the use of um, helping people to deal with post-traumatic stress disorder. When Mark rescued my daughter and I and took us to the safety of Alaska, it was the first time that I'd ever experienced such kindness, such goodness, safety in my whole life's experience. I didn't know that good people even existed in this world. I'd, I'd long since had any hope that good people even could exist in this world. And then Mark came along. And it would be far easier for me to believe that he was an alien or um, a god or anything because that was easier than knowing that good people existed. But he told me, he said, there's more good people in this world than bad. And boy, have I ever found that out. There are so many good people in this world. It's in a human nature for being good. And it is the, the people that are in control of our world, that are manipulating our minds and manipulating our lives into so much violence that um, are the minority. And we just need to quit following them and reclaim our, our lives and our minds. Mark taught me that the best way for me to control, to be able to control my own mind and to reclaim my mind was to write out memory. By writing out memory, what that does, a very act of moving a pen, opens the neuron pathways of the brain. And by opening those neuron pathways, that information is transferred over to the logic part of the brain that's moving the pen. Plus, it's right out front there on paper now where my, my conscious mind would see it and be able to understand what had happened to me. 
When I first gained awareness, it was through being safe. Safety is a crucial factor in anyone healing from a dissociative identity disorder. They've got to be out of that horrible environment. Um, someone in the military is not likely to heal while they're still on the battle forefront. Someone who's been horribly abused in a church isn't likely to remember by going into that, while they're still going to that church. It, you have to just kind of put that aside until you can consciously start making your free thought choices again. Because what happens is the brain is still trying to compartmentalize that so the rest of the mind can function normally. It doesn't allow for a person to know what has happened to them if they're still in their abuse base in any way. Even in like my daughter Kelly's case, my daughter was subjected to a technological form of mind control. She was exposed to harmonics because harmonics vibrate the neuron pathways in the brain and section it off that way. It works kind of like how um, harmonics in music would work. You know, if, when you hear a song, you'll remember where you were when you first heard that song, maybe a favorite song. You're like, oh, I remember we fell in love to that song. I know where we were when that song was playing. That's just a minor example of how harmonics affect the neuron pathways. Uh, churches have long since known with the bells and, you know, I mean, the harmonics that are used can um, affect the, the neuron pathways of the brain. And my daughter needs to have healing on the same level that her, um, her, her programming went in. I look forward to the day that she can, that she can heal fully. And at this point in time, it became very clear that as she turned age 30 herself, that there were parts of her brain that were beginning to open and her past was intruding on her present. And even though she lives a love that she is true to soul, she was not able to maintain that with her past intruding on her present all the time. And as that came in, it became clear to me that she needed to be away from me in order to heal. Not because I was an abuser, but we were abused together. And no matter how loving, how much love we have for each other, love cannot heal the damage that was done to her brain with what was done to her. She needed to allow her brain to heal and be away from me just long enough for that to take place. Sometimes, even being in a family situation, you say, well, I understand that, that my father was abusive to me because he was abused, and understanding is so much bigger than forgiveness. But still, even understanding that, it doesn't mean that you should stay in that abuse space because you've got to get away from it completely and be in a safe, loving space so that all levels of the brain can heal because our brain acts separately from us in that regard. It has its own physical actions that have to heal as well as our psychological desires and as well as our, um, our, our, our love or any other in, intent that we would have. Being in a safe place with Mark was the first step towards my healing. The second step would be to trust him. Why would I trust Mark? I didn't, I didn't know to trust anybody. I couldn't think to trust anybody. Matter of fact, until I gained conscious awareness, I wasn't able to form any thought of my own at all. And in order to do that, Mark put a watch on my wrist first thing, because the concept of time equates to a concept of awareness. And once I became aware and wasn't dissociating, that awareness is when I became responsible for my life and when I had to learn to think. Well, being safe and having conscious awareness. Once I had conscious awareness and became responsible, people were telling me, well, you have to love yourself. And 
after all I had been through and the criminal operations I was forced to participate in, knowing what my daughter had been through, it was very difficult to even think about loving myself according to a daily affirmation, something from the outside in. I think, I think ego is people's perception of self based on other people's input, you know, something we're conditioned to. And I didn't have any of that because I had been absolutely robotic mind controlled and by the time I wrote out my memory and reclaimed control over my own mind, I didn't have any perception of self from outside input and I couldn't think of a reason that I should, you know, quote, love myself. But I found that who I am, the very essence of my being, the energy of myself, that spirit aspect of me, is love. That's a love energy. And I choose to live the love I am. And by living the love I am, that's a whole lot easier than trying to love myself or anything else. It is the most powerful force in the universe, and it's something that will empower each and every one of us to be able to reclaim our lives in in every way. I'm so fortunate to have been able to write out my memory, the, the powerful tool that Mark taught me, and to be able to learn to think for myself. Because once I wrote out my memory, once I deprogrammed what I was supposed to forget, once I had written all that out, my mind was like a blank slate and I had to learn to think. And I had to push. I had to think past perceptions. I had to think past what I had been subjected to. I had to learn to think further and um, consider all angles. And each and every one of us needs to do that every day. When we look at the news and we see the horror on it, let's look beyond that. What else is a pe are the, do the people in that country do? Expand your thinking, learn to think further. Once I healed, my daughter still needed help and that's what compelled Mark and I to start speaking out to begin with. And when National security was invoked on our case, our, on our testimony for the U.S. Permanent Congressional Select Committee on Intelligence Oversight. Upon advice of the federal attorney, we released that information in Transformation of America and, and distributed it, got that information out everywhere. Because this was before computers and we had our, our book and we were getting that information out there as best we could. And we began speaking for my daughter's sake so that people would be able to help her and understand her need. It was love that compelled us to speak out. Well, we spoke out for uh, 25 years now and we detailed how we survived to reach this point in speaking out in our book, Access Denied for Reasons of National Security. Access Denied has all the healing methods in it that Mark taught me in full detail. As you as government whistleblowers, that information has been able to be made public through my life's experience because that's walking that fine legal line in order to get the information out there. And I encourage you, please look into Access Denied for Reasons of National Security and see how to, uh, how people can heal from any level of dissociation. Since this release, people all over the world have been healing with that information from varying levels of trauma, abuse, torture, post-traumatic stress disorder, and control. It's helping people in the military, military special forces, even in intelligence community, people who have been sexually abused as children, people who um, have been traumatized and controlled in a church setting, and people, good people who just are tired of being fed misinformation through the controlled medias and want to learn to expand their thinking. We hear from people every day who are benefiting tremendously from that information. And once we all have truth and begin to reclaim our lives, 
through that truth, we're able to express our strength of spirit. And no matter what kind of controls are being put on us, whether it's through terror, whether it's through harmonics, or whatever other technologies they have now, one thing is for certain, they cannot control the human spirit. And that is where we win and where they lose. Mark gathered. <laughs> Mark gathered his strength of spirit, and Roseanne has been certainly living hers for years and years and years. And, and I encourage each and every one of you to do the same, because truth indeed makes us free. And truth is the first step towards a necessary positive change that we need to see in this world. Please take this truth and spread the word. Thank you so much for coming out today. My question is for Mark. You mentioned that you have a database of patents, of uh, 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 technology that's used, that has been used to patent for mind control. Uh, can you tell us what, uh, what keywords or what patent filing sections you would search for to look for current mind control technology? Because Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I don't want to sound like a politician. That's a really good question. Um, I've had, over the past quarter of a century, I've had this stuff come and go. And uh, matter of fact, we spent a week reorganizing my paper files this past week. I'm talking about 12 hours a day. And there was three of us doing it. And we're still not there. I had a list of uh, patents that were, uh, patents applied for, patents that were, uh, uh, granted pending uh, maybe seven or eight particular ones uh, that were using harmonics that could literally affect the mind. I had one device and I do still have the patent information on it and I also have uh, the schematic for it. You, you can make the thing out of uh, stuff you get at Radio Shack and um, it's a dual coil um, electromagnetic device very, very low. Um, uh, matter of fact, it, it ran off of two nine volt batteries, would last about four hours. And if you set it down and turned it on, make sure you got somebody that can turn it off remotely because you cannot think to turn it off. Um, you cannot logically add up a, a column of say, one, two, three, four, five, six. You, you can't add those uh, six numbers, impossible. Um, if you broke into someone's home how can they, and they had how can they research it? Well, um, if, uh, if they, I think, I think if they just simply look for uh, uh, weaponized harmonic equipment, um, you'll, you're going to find a lot of it on the internet. And a lot of that stuff is, uh, is of course, baloney, but there's a lot of it that is extraordinarily accurate. I know that particular piece of equipment is, is on there. But that, that would be the way to search for it. And if you don't find it, send me an email. And I'll, I'll look in my files and, and find it for you. I'm going to have to uh, demand that your answers be short. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I encourage everybody to keep asking the questions, too, because when I mentioned to uh, Kadena that HARP had been turned off, that the U.S. government turned HARP off and are dismantling it, her first question was, well, what do they have now? Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, let's keep asking the questions and keep looking Can for Can I ask that too. question? Do yeah. you know what do they have now? Don't know. Um, I'll tell you what I do know is that uh, they didn't, HARP didn't file for a budget uh, last January. And when they didn't file for a budget last January, uh, there were some intelligence guys that I still know that work in Alaska that um, were involved in uh, overseeing the, the, the packing up of all that equipment. And they got into it with uh, 
um, uh, the Alaska University because Alaska University had a lot of collateral equipment in there and they just took it too. But they shut them down, not just that place, but they shut Hart down around the world. What do they have in this place? Uh -huh. I can assure you it makes Hart look like a Stone Age piece. How is uh, mind control used in the uh, music business, the, uh, in the entertainment industry? Oh, in the music in business? The Oh, oh, okay. When I was growing up in the project, when I was still very, very young, the Jacksons were just coming on the music scene, and Michael Jackson was about the same age, and um, he was subjected to the same multi-generational project that I was, Project Monarch is what it was called at that time. And at the same time, uh, the Osmonds were being brought up in it. And the harmonics and the music made them, you know, giant stars in addition to their talent. But as Michael Jackson said, you know, that he was his music. He, that he, that's why he moved, he, he thought, he, he believed he was the music that was his programming. And the more you know about mind control, the more you see how that was done. With the Osmonds, it was used very deliberately to um, bring to, uh, people into the Mormon church because they were like the Pied Pipers into the Mormon church. So the harmonics were used in the music with them to make them big stars and bring people in because um, technology is highly used in the Mormon church for mind control of the masses in there as well. Those are the two um, examples I know of. And then in the country music industry, uh, it was just totally saturated with it too. I'll tell you how it, it works everywhere in the world, not just Hollywood, but everywhere in the world, women are forcibly impregnated through rape in families and um, their children held uh, for ransom by the particular psychopath who heads that household. Uh, and um, it's so every day that, you know, I just, I, I just really wanted to make the point that when people say, oh, Hollywood, and they keep on friggin' hammering that home, that's everybody. It's, it's not just Hollywood. Women in Hollywood are addicted to drugs, and they're, they're beaten, and they're kept in line, and their families are threatened. And, you know, it comes from inside their families, their people, that's why. And you know what? It happens to men, too. It happens to artists. Um, it happens to men, artists, and women show up who steal their money and beat up their kids. And, you know, so it's, it's not even, it's not even what we think it is. It's just a culture of uh, violence and rewarding psychopathic oh, yeah. behavior. Tell us the good news, just for a minute. The good news is people all over the world are waking up and um, it's, yeah. awareness is rising. We just, we, we just returned from uh, Germany. By the way, at one point when we went over to promote our, our German edition, because now we've got, what, we've got 16 foreign editions. Um, and we're in about 60 different countries. Wow, and great. we did it with no advertising, and I don't get any, and Kathy and I don't get any royalties as whistleblowers, zero. We charge them a little fee up front, and that's it. But we actually got to speak where Hitler, I got to use the same podium as Hitler did when he was addressing some of his elite SS troops. I'm going, what the hell? You know. Mind control began there, and it's and, and they're reaching out to the rest of the world with healing from it and PTSD. Awesome. There's um, good awesome. people all over the world that are uh, are reaching out yeah. and with full understanding of what's happening to people in the United States being trauma traumatized and then led. And um, it's a, a global awakening, and there's a lot of compassion. As people regain their truth, they're regaining compassion, and uh, that's making all the difference in the world. I'm just wondering if, in your opinion, Justin Trudeau is somebody to be very wary of because of his father. Either either somebody to watch or someone to um, to see if if he's been subjected to control, because it could be a, you know a George Bush Bush Jr. situation, you know. Um, the more you know, the more you see, and um, just learn more and more about mind control. I, I, I can't say anything beyond that because I don't know him personally like I did Pierre. Uh, I'm a control interactive, uh -huh. um, and I'd like to know 
what I should be aware of, um, creating them and, and with them navigating them. Well, most of all, I'd tell you what, what you've got to do as their mother is allow them to act. If they're actors, then allow them to act. Don't, don't uh, cheapen their talent by, um, you know, having them um, pantomime. Um, they should be kept as far away <laughs> from that business as anything on earth. You know, they can put on plays in the garage, you know, that's most fun because there'll be no, no pressure on them to perform or deliver money or to be in a, a, put in a position where, you know, there are a, a large amount of pedophiles who you know, would like to get a hold of them. So I, I would just let them act at home and go to school and, like, get good grades, and then if they graduate, they can get in the business. I just would not ever advise any parent to get their kid anywhere near show business as a child. It, I, it, it destroys their lives, and uh, you know, I, that's just the truth, I have yeah. to say it. Well, <clears throat> you can look up uh, one area, is where are these child actors from, you know, decades past, where are they now? What happened to them? And you, what the statistics you're going to see is going to terrify you. And if you go one step farther and look at the Disney, the kids that came out of Disney, oh boy. then you'll understand why Ampex built a facility underneath that lake uh, at uh, Disney World in Orlando that was above top secret. Now I'm wondering what, why in the world we were building a above top secret laboratory in Disney World that was really strange to me. I'm telling you something that's been declassified. It, it, it is a fact. And why on earth would the US military build the largest hotel right there on that lake? And it seems to me that if you listen real close, when, when a, somebody is uh, um, awarded something, uh, some military thing that you'll see, or even uh, in the sports too, anywhere, any place where there are cash cows, they will say, all I want is to go to Disney World. I've heard that so many times that I'm thinking, why didn't anybody else hear this? So don't let them go to Disney World. <laughs> no. Knowledge, <laughs> knowledge is our defense against mind control. Arm yourself with it, arm them with it, encourage them to live true to soul.